Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and today I want to start my next playthrough series and that's all about the Doctor. Doctor Who? Doctor. Okay, I have prepared the game for a two-player game and I decided to go with the first Doctor and the 11th Doctor down there. I'm doing that because of the regeneration rule, which I may be able to show you at some point in time of this playthrough, but yeah, maybe not. And the reason why I use the first and the 11th Doctor is because then there is a Doctor in the base game, which I can immediately regenerate to. The first Doctor will get, I think, the fourth Doctor and the 11th Doctor will get the 12th Doctor. This makes it a little bit easier for me and is also one of the little problems I have with this game because the base game only ships with four doctors and when you're really playing a three or four player game you're basically that's all the doctors you will ever see. They are regenerating, that's cool, you get a new doctor but it will always be those four doctors and here I would really have hoped for at least two maybe really four more doctors in the base game in order yeah, to do stuff. I know yeah oof, they do that because of cost efficiency reasons in order not to make the game more expensive. Yeah, okay. But yeah, that's how it is. Hopefully we will see all the Doctors coming sooner or later with some of the expansions. But yeah, for now, those are the four Doctors. And the Doctors always start the game with their linked um, companions. And for the first Doctor, that's Susan here. And for the 11th Doctor, that's obviously Amy Pond. To be honest, I have only seen, I think, one or two episodes with the first Doctor. And of course, I have seen most of the episodes with the more current ones. The goal of the game is to move one of the player TARDISes here to Gallifrey before the Dalek ship will reach Gallifrey here first. And there's always something in the Dalek turn which you do after all the players have taken their turn and there is a victory check set. The problem is you always check for victory for the Daleks first. So if you really make it the same turn to Gallifrey, which happens more often than I would really um, anticipate, but it happens, then yeah, if the Daleks would be there, you would check for their victory first and yeah, then we would obviously lose the game. There is an interesting thread on the Geek, which is about if this game is a cooperative game or a semi-cooperative game. To be honest, this is my humble opinion, I think it is a semi-cooperative game and this is what I expected when I got this game from this year's Essen. Not all agree with that and I think even the designer chimed in at some point in time and said no, no, this game is a cooperative game but some of the cards really do make you think it's a semi-cooperative game because you can send TARDIS ship backwards for example and move your ship for or your TARDIS forward and things like that. Of course you can always play it in a cooperative fashion but not sure if that game may be too easy if you're playing it totally cooperatively. I will play it this way, that really only one Doctor will really fully win this game. But I will never play this game like one of the players should tank the game. So let's say whatever, red player is here, blue player is here, red thinks, hey, I have no chance, so I will tank the game for the blue players and no one will win the game. This is something that really doesn't feel like Doctor Who for me at least. So I will always try, even being the red player, to whatever make Doctor Who or this our side win this game even if I will not be the top doctor in this session here and I think for me this worked fine. I played this game a couple of times already in two player games and three player games and no one really complained about this one. Basically everyone was fine playing it this way. Of course there are various ways in order to lose the game. One of the ways I already described to you if the Dalek ship will make it to Gallifrey pretty much before the doctors will do that then yeah we would all lose the game. The second way to lose this game is if one of the time zones on earth ever contains three Dalek tokens. They refer to in the rule book as tokens but they're actually very nice miniatures here. And the third way to lose this game is when there are already six Dalek markers on the board. Let's say four are here on this location, two are here on earth and we would have to place another Dalek token. In this case the players cooperatively will have lost the game as well. And there is this nice little Davros reminder here. So when you place Davros, you know, hey, this is the last Dalek token I have now. I really have to get rid of some of those in order not to lose the game. And yeah, that's pretty much it in respect to preparation. I explain all the rules as I go. As usual, we will start with the first Doctor here. The first thing that you always do at the start of your turn is to take two Sonic screwdriver. But keep in mind, you are never allowed to have more than 
five of those tokens. So we will so now, now all more or less start the game with four of those Sonic Charge token. During the prepare step, we would also be allowed to dis dismiss companions right now because you can never have more than three companions. And sometimes you really have a companion, which really doesn't help you because you already have that kind of combination of dice already, things like that. But I will explain that too. As I go, I can discard equipment because I can also not have more than equipment installed to my TARDIS. Then I would be allowed to play equipment cards that take place in the prepare step, or I could use any use prepare step effects that usually come with equipment cards I have more or less um, prepared before. All the doctors start the game with two of those timey wimey cards. <laughs> really, this is so cool. And I think the first doctor was pretty lucky to be honest. So he really found his very own ring here. And in order to place this at the TARDIS or install it to my TARDIS, it says it's an equipment card. I can do that during the prepare step. I now have to pay two of those Sonic Charge tokens. The good thing is once I have installed this equipment, I no longer have to pay for this cost here. So I can pretty much use it during the adventure phase. And this Doctor's Ring gives me the ability to reroll up to two of my black dice, which isn't a bad thing. I still have one more card left, but I think I will hold on to this. And I think I will call it a day for the prepare step. Then we come to the travel step. Stay at your current location, move to another location in play or to a new location. All the doctors start the game on their TARDIS console here. So there is nothing to do. So we have to move to a new location. So I cannot choose to stay at the TARDIS. I really have to travel in order to solve those dilemmas. I now have two choices. I could either move to one of the time zones on Earth. Therefore, I don't have to roll the TARDIS dice. So the TARDIS always knows the way to Earth in no matter which time zone I want to go to. But overall, there are definitely much better locations out there. So my second choice would be to travel to one of those alien locations out there. And I think this is what I want to do. But before, because I want to travel somewhere else but Earth, I have to roll this TARDIS die. I believe four sides show the TARDIS symbol, which is good. And two of the sides show this question mark symbol. And if I roll, let's say, a TARDIS symbol, I can pretty much um, decide to draw two location tiles and choose one. And if I roll the question mark tile, I have to draw a location tile and yeah, pretty much go there. So I don't have any choices. But as Red is the first doctor, his special ability says instead of rolling the TARDIS die, you must draw, you may draw a location tile and move to it. If you do draw a timey whiny card, and this is really great. So I think, yeah, we will not roll the die. We will simply draw the very first location tile here, place it somewhere next to the game board and I will deploy two face down the llama tiles here accordingly. So now I have to decide if I want to move to Nerva Beacon Far Future or to the Nerva Beacon Future. But because I used my special ability, the first doctor is allowed to draw a timey wimey card. But of course, we have to move our doctor to one of the time zones. This one is a little bit easier because it only shows two symbols, but there will be whatever one, two, three more symbols here on this dilemma tile. So keep that in mind. And here we already start with three here. I currently only have one companion. I will now or soon be able to hire an additional um, companion, but this is already pretty. Those could be six symbols I would need to roll, even though I would move, would be allowed to move my TARDIS forward three spaces, which is great. I think I would rather go here because it's my very first turn. So we go to the Nerva Beacon Far Future. Now we are allowed to flip over the dilemma tile that's connected to this one. And wow, that's bad. That's really bad. We have just found the confession deal. And this is a fixed point, which means we cannot re-roll dice. Wow, this is really a bad start, to be honest. And I need three of those tactic symbols here, which are mainly found on the red die. So this is pretty much the background. You can find those symbols on other dice. It doesn't really matter on which die the symbol shows up. The color really only tells you, gives you a hint on which die you will most likely find the appropriate symbol. So overall, we only need four, let's say, successes here, but there are very specific 
fantastic results. And right now, our first doctor is pretty good doing blue and it's a green dye, or he's getting blue and green dyes. So it's not really, or not that likely that we would be allowed to roll a red die. The 11th doctor, so, has Amy with him. So he, Amy's ability allows the 11th doctor to transform one black die to a red die, which then really could help us. But the problem is we need three of those symbols. And wow, this will be a very tough adventure, to be honest. But as we are now entering our adventure step, the doctor is now allowed to either discard a sonic charge token or a timely winding card in order to recruit a new companion. I think this is what he wants to do. So let's get rid of this timely wimey card. It's not a bad card, but I think we really need an additional companion for now. And as we are not on Earth, we have to draw from the alien companion stack. Some of the characters or some of the companions show this linked ability here or the link keyword. So Susan is linked to Barbara Wright, but unfortunately Barbara Wright can only be found on Earth and right now we are at an alien location. So if he would have traveled to Earth, Susan would now be allowed to take Barbara Wright directly out of the Earth companion stack rather than to randomly choose a companion. Sometimes it really gives you some more, let's say, tactical decisions in order to, or in order to optimize your gang. Yeah. To solve those adventures. Okie dokie, let's draw our alien companion. And I think here we were really kind of lucky, to be honest. We were able to find River Song. How cool is that? First of all, she gives us a red die. And we can use this ability here in order to switch the faces of one red die to this symbol here, which is really, really great. We cannot re roll dice, but we can use this kind of ability. It will be still extremely, extremely difficult in order to yeah, go through this adventure, to be honest. But yeah, at least this gives us somewhat of a chance. And you see that here, while she would be with the 8th or the 12th Doctors, we would gain plus one green die. And if she would be with the 10th or 11th Doctor, she would gain one additional blue die. Of course, right now we don't have the 8th Doctor or the 10th Doctor in the game. But yeah, those cards already refer to later expansions as well and the rules are pretty clear on that. Right now we have not fully introduced her to her group which is the reason why I leave her a little bit off the TARDIS for now. I have to be successful in this adventure before I'm allowed to permanently yeah, keep River Song with us but for now she will definitely help us. Now it's time to create our dice pool. So we pretty much look for all those plus symbols here and the color in this shows us how many dice I will get from each color. So first doctor starts with four black dice and each of the doctors right now has four black dice. If I'm not mistaken, then he also brings a blue die. We need one blue die or one would be ideal to have a blue die because there is one challenge waiting for us. Susan also brings a black die with her and River Song also brings a red die with us. So right now we are at seven dice. Our maximum is always eight. Uh, we can have more dice in total but then we have to reduce at some point in time or we have to pick and choose which dice we want to end up. So when you're really rolling those dice, you will normally not have more than eight dice available to you. Luckily, the game comes with this handy dandy story dice reference card here. So it shows you which symbols you can expect on which of those dice. The black die is really a jack of all trades dice like the doctor is. It shows all of the symbols. So even the tactic symbol here, the green dice is really good for running, for negotiations and tactics. The science die is good for science ideas and discussion yeah the red dice is apparently the aggressive one which then really shows some strength symbols here and some of those tactic symbols here as well right now we only have one red die and even this red die only has a two in a six chance or one third in a chance to show the symbol to us and we don't have any green dice and here the black die only shows one of those symbols so overall it's not really looking good for the first doctor at this point in time and I think now it would be a good time already in order to request help from another doctor. In order to do that, the doctor requesting help needs to discard either a sonic charge token or a timey-wimey card. 
We can use those Sonic Charge tokens or two of those in order to re-roll one die. During this adventure we are not allowed to re-roll, let's say, a die. So I think it could be worthwhile to simply give up a Sonic Charge token. With three Sonic Charge tokens, so you would be allowed to change one die to show the symbol of your choice, which is really powerful and this is not prohibited by this fixed point special ability on that dilemma tile here. So in this case, I think, yeah, let's do that. Let's discard one Sonic Charge tokens in order to ask the 11th Doctor for help. He cannot deny the help, so he has to jump in, but he has a choice. He can now travel to the location or he can try to help from afar. If he helps from afar, he doesn't need to spend anything, but will only be allowed to contribute one additional die to this test. And I think that's pretty much enough because we need or we want to have one more red die. So I think, yeah, he will decide to help from afar, which means he will start, he will contribute one black die for now. But of course, we are still able to do some tweaks. Now, this would be the next step. So now our companions can help the doctor in order to focus. So you keep in mind, he has five of those black dice, which can show anything pretty much. And those symbols here allows the doctor to replace one black die with a more focused die. And I really need this symbol as I cannot reroll. I think I want to remove or exchange at least one of those black dice in order to show another blue die here. And yeah, those dice really show this symbol here three times. So it's really good chance that we roll this die or better the symbol which we need to place on this test here. The 11th Doctor only has one black die here, but I think he will now use Amy Pond who could either change one black die to green or to red. In this case, he wants to get another red die here. This definitely helps us get some better odds here. And keep in mind that the entire dice pool is limited to eight dice in total. So if the first doctor would have eight dice already in his die pool, he would now need to reduce that by one die if he asks for help from another doctor from afar. If he would have, or if the other doctor would travel to the same location, then he would only be allowed to roll five dice at maximum. And then the other doctor would have been to contribute three dice in total. Well, this is really something that you have to think about but when asking for help or coming a doctor to your location, you also have to move the Dalek ship two spaces forward. And this is really something that you only should do in your dire need of some, some dice in order to whatever, remove the six Dalek token or something like that. In this case, you would really call the other doctor and he would then travel to your location. After we have focused, it's time to actually roll those dice. So the first Doctor will simply start here. This is not bad. We already have one of those dice showing, which is okay, but I think it's not enough. We don't even have the science symbol here, which you really needed. And now the second Doctor or the 11th Doctor will also roll his red die. So let's see what he rolls. And here we are lucky. So this is the die we will certainly keep from the 11th Doctor. So we will place it like this. So we already know what we have achieved. Now, the first Doctor has only one choice, to be honest. He cannot reroll dice because he's out of any Sonic Charge token. On top of this, he can also not use this special ability, the Doctor's Ring, because this is also a reroll. And the same is true for Susan's dice ability. So we would also allow him to reroll one plaque die. And overall, we are really so damn close. If we would have been able to reroll those dice here and stuff like that, we may may be able to change the but we still have one thing that we can do and this is to discard one of those black dice in order to reroll all of your dice this is only true for the dice that are in your dice but this will not affect the successful roll of the 11th doctor here so we will keep this die for sure but we will still be allowed to reroll those six dice which is at least somewhat of a chance in order to get the proper symbols and we can do that as long as we have black dice in our die pool to be honest so i have now discarded one of those black dice so Let's simply re-roll those dice here. And keep in mind, we still have River Song special ability, which allows us to put this um, red die here to the right symbol. So overall, that's definitely a good chance. So let's 
see and wow look at that this was extremely lucky so we can now go for this symbol here or this symbol here it doesn't really matter which color it's showing we only need the symbol so in this case we will make it thematically correct we will use this symbol here and this symbol here which means we have now successfully overcome this dilemma here this is so cool this dilemma will get discarded right away we will get our reward this sets move your tardis forward two spaces and on top of this we would also get one timey wimey card awesome so let's move the red TARDIS one, two spaces forward. And in the meantime, I noticed I have forgotten to place those time anomaly tokens, which will be triggered if the Davoro ship will move on this space or over this space. So I will come to that sooner or later as well. But the first doctor is also allowed to draw a timey wimey card. That's really so cool. As the 11th doctor was successful in helping us, he's also granted a reward. And that's always a timey wimey card cool stuff additionally the first doctor is also allowed to keep river song with him this is really great so he is now getting a red die and you really need different kind of dice that's really so important in this game in order to give you some flexibility in what you are doing so overall this was really a great turn i was never ever thinking of winning or overcoming this dilemma great great job okay and then it's the 11th doctor he will get it is two sonic charge tokens his special ability makes buying equipment cards less expensive so he will have to basically spend one less sonic charge token to play which is really helpful and let me check his deck but unfortunately doesn't have any equipment cards in his hand which is really bad and this was the card we have just drawn here teamwork event anytime Choose another Doctor, both you and that Doctor gains two Sonic Charge tokens. Well, that's pretty cool. And yeah, this is, to be honest, my most favorite Doctor, by the way, David Tennant. Great guy. And I just noticed something. I always forget this, to be honest. I've played the first Doctor several times already with Susan here. And yeah, I really should have given him one additional Sonic Charge token. So I would have been allowed to let's say change the facing of a die but in this case everything went fine but i will simply give him the additional sonic charge token for the next round but then coming back to the 11th doctor of course we will not get rid of amy pond here she's really great especially when traveling with the 11th doctor because he allows him to reroll one green die which is always a good thing of course and now he has to go to his travel phase right now he's still here in his TARDIS and he can also decide if he wants to travel to Earth for example and Earth present is kind of okay because he, it would still allow him to advance one space or his TARDIS one space and he would be allowed to draw one timey wimey card and here the game starts to feel a little bit competitive because the blue player or the 11th doctor sees hey the red guy already moved his TARDIS two spaces and he's basically ahead in order to win this game but on the other hand this may be a more easier thing because there are only two symbols I roll blue dice I have good re-rolls on green dice so I could use this in order to gain a cool companion for example and whatever build my gang up for the next round or so in order to go for more challenging locations and I think why not Let's send the 11th Doctor here to Earth present. It's an Earth location, so we don't have to roll the TARDIS die again. And then we would reveal the dilemma here. And what do we have? The impossible astronaut. Oh yeah, I remember this episode. This is no, no spoilers here. Uh, some of you may know this episode for sure. It's another fixed point. So again, we cannot re-roll dice and wow this is really whew, not looking good good thing is we may be able to solve this one here but overall we now need to overcome pretty much five symbols here and if it would be not be doing good then we would have to discard two timey wimey cards and the dalek ship would also move two spaces ahead okay let's go into the adventure phase first thing would be to draw a companion and as we are on earth and amy pond is of course linked to rory williams and he is on earth i could now go for rory williams instead and i think i will do so i will not draw randomly i will simply go for rory here obviously I already did that and he will now also contribute an additional um, blue die and we would be allowed to change the facing of a blue die to this yeah, light bulb symbol here which we really need for this dilemma here so we need two blue light bulbs so overall i think rory may be the 
perfect candidate for us. Of course, we still have to discard something in order to gain that companion. I think I will go for this Sonic Charge Loop. Normally you would really have to do that before you draw that. But of course, I know Rory Williams already. So for me, this was definitely a no brainer. And now we would start building our dice pool. And I am allowed to build my dice pool before I, um, let's say, decide to go or to call for help here. So let's, let's do that first. So again, we will have four black dice from the doctor. We have a blue die from the doctor. Amy brings an additional green die and Rory brings also an additional blue die. So overall, again, we are only rolling seven dice and it may be a good idea to really call for help again because we would simply gain an additional die. Huh, that's now interesting. And I think, yeah, let's do that. Let's let's really do that. And I think we will go for an additional Sonic Charge token in order to call the help of the first Doctor. And he will, of course, help us. And he has to. He has a dice pool of one. I tell him, hey, we need this red die and we need this symbol here. So for him, it's a no brainer. So he will simply go for this die here. We can leave it on this face so he really doesn't have to roll because River allows him to change the facing on that die to that symbol here. But of course we will roll because maybe we are rolling something else and yeah, whatever. Need to see what combination we actually end up with. Then we can focus and I think we want to remove or exchange this black die to an additional green die here. We need some green symbols and hmm, let's see. Yeah, why not? Let's exchange this black die here for another blue die. So we have pretty much used Amy's special ability in order to change to a blue die, a green die and Rory's special ability to change black die into a blue die here. You have to really decide. You cannot do both. Okay, and then it's time to actually roll some dice. And some of you may know that I really like rolling dice, even though I suck at it. So let's start with the 11th Doctor again. We will assign those dice as much as we can, and then we would decide what I want to go for. And this was a terrible, terrible roll, to be honest. So let's roll the die for the first doctor here. For now, we don't have to decide, but this die doesn't do us anything. So I think we will simply use River Song's ability and change this to this facing here for now, because we don't need the fist symbol um, and we cannot reroll. So yeah, why not? Let's change this or let's place this die here already. And now I think the 11th doctor will also say no. Let's also get rid of a black die. Let's re-roll those dice here and see what comes out of this. Okay, what do we have? And again, wow, this really starts to hurt. We only have one symbol we need. Rory could use this to change it to that facing. We have this symbol here. Oh man, we are losing. We are needing one additional symbol. And I think I don't want to take the chances here. I think we should be able to go for it. So we will place this die here. We will use Rory's ability to change a blue die to this facing here. Let's place it here and I think I would rather place this blue die here. And now I will play a timey wimey card from the hand of the 11th Doctor and that's determined. No, that's the wrong one. Sorry. <laughs> that's message from the past. Event any adventure. Change one black die to the symbol of your choice. So we will now change the black die to this symbol. We can do that. We cannot reroll dice, but we can change the facings. So this card is gone. And so we have pretty much overcome this adventure here or the dilemma here, which is great. In this case, we would be allowed to move the TARDIS one space ahead. We can keep Rory as a companion, which is neat. And we get another timey wimey card, the ancient and the worshipful law of Gallifrey. I think this is with the fourth doctor and this is an event. Unfortunately, again, he was not able to gain an equipment card. But as the first doctor helped us, he's also allowed to draw a timey-wimey card. Of course, this dilemma is discarded as well. We will place a new dilemma face down here. So we can now decide to stay here because 
earth dilemmas will always get replenished at the end of this step here. And I think that's already the end of his adventure phase. Now we would do the Dalek turn, which is pretty simple. We would move the Dalek marker one step ahead. Then we would check for victory. First the Dalek guy. So do we have three Daleks on a location on Earth? No, we don't. Has the Dalek ship reached Gallifrey? No, it doesn't. Then we would check for the Doctor's victory. Has one of the Doctors reached Gallifrey? No, they haven't. So this is already the end of the Dalek turn. And then we would move back to the first Doctor and would start our next round. But I think I will call it a day for today. I really hope I haven't messed things up. If you find something, please let me know and I will try to correct that as much as I can during the next episode or so. And yeah, hope to see you soon in one of my other videos and until then, bye bye. <laughs>